But this time you're gonna go like, well, I could fold it, but I'm, I'm not folding it. Right. So I make it $40, dealer. No calling allowed. No calling allowed. What do you think? You mean I have to fold every hand the rest of my life? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it would this could right work. Up, right after <laughs> no, um, our friend Andrew Nimi tried a really interesting experiment, mm. and I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay. He said, if there's a raise in front of me, mm -hmm. I can't call. No I calling. Can, I can fold or I can three bet. Uh -huh. And, and it was an experiment. It wasn't, right. it wasn't, you know, forever I'm in. Right. It was, I'm going to try this as an experiment. Right. And I am fascinated yeah. with the possibilities. Well, I mean, you just told me about it. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> so uh, and I'm what do you looking think? now that you've just heard about it, what do you think? Yeah, well, I'm going to do it. And I can already see how it could uh, help my game. Um, you know, I really like the idea of experimenting on my game, mm -hmm. you know, trying things. Might be for an hour, might be for a day or whatever, just to see how it feels, especially if it's something I'm not used to doing, gets me out of my comfort zone. And I recommend this to clients all the time. So this is a pretty good idea of that. Let's say you've got, uh, you know, Jack-10 suited on the button. Yeah, so there's, a, there's an early open. You're playing a 1-3 game and he makes it 12 and you're like, yeah, oh, right. I definitely call my 12 buck. But this time you're going to go like, well, I could fold it, but I'm, I'm not folding it. Right. So I make it $40, dealer. Very aggressive. Yeah, those are your only options. Those Colorful. are your only options. So like, let's say you had a hand like 10-8 uh, offsuit, where it's a hand where you might like to call against that opponent, mm -hmm. but because your only options are fold or raise, and you don't want to raise, now you fold. Now you throw it away. Which might be an improvement as well. And so if you can really stick to this plan, mm -hmm. you're going to end up folding some marginal hands that you would have otherwise played. It might be an improvement. Mm -hmm. But the bigger side is that you're going to be three betting more. And let's talk about that three betting because yeah. I think that's super important. When you're watching low stakes games, three bets often are basically queens plus and ace king. But people such as Alex Fitzgerald and Ed mm -hmm. Miller talk about the power of that so-called light three bet. That is something that isn't queens and up. Right. Because the table tends to go into a fit or fold mode Yep. After the flop, right. well, then the three better can essentially print money by, C by that C bet. Right. That's what I picked up from reading Alex's stuff and kind of got me interested in more three betting. You know, in Alex's newsletter that I read, he talks about three betting a lot and this whole idea that if the opponents are basically not defending in three bet pots often enough, if they're playing fit or fold, then it becomes correct against those opponents to three bet more often and C bet more often. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten in the habit of the last five or six years, uh, you know, when I'm in the cutoff and the button, especially, let's say there's an open under the gun and even one or two callers, and I've got my seven, six offsuit, you know, with the deep stacks, I like calling this hand, seeing the flop in position. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the no folding allowed thing for a while. And in that particular situation, Three bet it, you know, just experiment, mm -hmm. see what happens, right? It'll put me a little out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, I just had an idea. So what if we did a throwdown? We're going to go down to the Oaks. We're going to play in the same game. And if either one of us ever cold calls a raise before the flop, we have to buy the other one a car. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be high stakes. Can we make it lunch or something? Okay, we, uh, five bucks. Five penalty. bucks. We have to throw a nickel to the other guy. Right. <laughs> Except I already know that no nickels will change him. We're, we have no, too much pride. No, we're, we're committed, right? We're too stubborn. I think anybody that thinks they have too much timidity in their game before the flop, taking the attitude of experimentation toward this, is good and it is a good experiment to try. Let's say that there's a, a raise under the gun and it folds to you and there you are with your pocket sixes in the cutoff. Uh -huh. And if the stacks are pretty deep, I think we're all like, oh yeah, right. give me some of that, flop me a six and right. we'll go to town. But what if you just said, okay, I'm not gonna call that 12 bucks. I'm gonna make it 35 or 40 or 45. Right. One, it almost ensures that you're gonna get the button. Mm -hmm. And that's, yep. that's a great outcome right there. Yep. 
Yeah. And now the villain is not going to put you on pocket sixes. In the villain's world, your hand is a lot stronger. Right. Which means that when that flop comes down, he's going to check a huge percentage of the time. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, you're firing. Well, it's simpler than that. I mean, roughly speaking, we miss the flop two-thirds of the time. Everyone does. Which means two-thirds of the time when he checks and you bet, he's faced with the decision of carrying on with nothing or not. Right. And that is the key math that makes the C-bet profitable is that people miss two-thirds of the time. Right. And the, when you look at all of the factors, it becomes profitable to C-bet with basically anything there. Now, there are board textures and things to take into mind and metagame things, but, but for the sake of this experiment, mm -hmm. the default concept is to three bet in these situations where you used to call mm -hmm. and plan to see bet. So, so let's look at it from the villain's viewpoint, okay. right? He raises right. with his pocket nines. Okay. And now Tommy three bets him. With whatever. With Sixes, whatever. Yeah. He, does, he doesn't know. Seven, six suited, <laughs> like, who he, knows? Yeah. Tommy, he doesn't know. Right. What he knows is, is that three bets in his world tend to be very strong. Right. Folds back around to him. Well, he's never holding pocket nines, and he calls. Uh -huh. But now the flop comes, queen, seven, four. And he checks. And Tommy fires. Mm -hmm. He's got no set. He's got an overcard he's looking at that can easily be part of Tommy's three bet range. Mm -hmm. And we're just on the flop. He hasn't, right. you know, I mean, there are turns and rivers that he's right. going to have to play out of position right. against the guy who announced pre flop that he had a real hand. So not only are they going to fold when they have nothing, they're going to fold sometimes when they have something. That's and some amount of time people are going to fold before the flop to the three that's bet. That's right. Now, just to clarify, everything we're talking about here is when you're in position. You're behind the original open. Right. We're not, none of this applies to three betting from the blinds. Let's just right. get that out there. You know, another way that math really favors the three better is when both people miss the flop. Which happens. A lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's say the first guy does open with uh, ace jack. Mm -hmm. And you, would, you have your seven six suit on the button and you call. Mm -hmm. And you both miss the flop. Yep. He's going to see bet and you're going to fold. Happens all the time. Right. Somebody's going to see bet and somebody's going to fold. And now if you are the three better and he calls, he checks to you, you bet, he folds. So I think, I think what you said that's magic is somebody's going to see bet and somebody's yeah. going to fold. Right. And so when both people miss, the pot goes to the C better, and that's one more advantage to three betting is you become the C better, and you win more because there's more money in the pot. So today's idea is... I love it. <laughs>